In the Dominican Republic, sugar is actually a giant industry and it has been for generations. So the sugar um, fields and the sugarcane company that owns many of those fields, what has happened over the years is they've actually invited Haitian immigrants to come and join to be the workers for those, to harvest in those sugarcane fields. In order to make that happen, they actually build villages in the middle, right in the middle of all these sugarcane fields where these Haitian immigrants will live. Many of these villages are without power, they can be without water, or indefinitely without electricity. They're allowed to live and exist in the bates, but they're not necessarily allowed to integrate into the, lo the larger life in the Dominican Republic. What this causes though is that it means that these isolated villages uh, become places where the, the sugarcane company or even the sugarcane field owners will exploit these workers by creating a company store where you can purchase some of your daily necessities, your rice, your beans or other things that you would need, uh, but it's going to be at an elevated price because you had to do the work of importing that in. So it creates challenges for the people working for uh, very low wages than to also purchase uh, uh, daily necessities at a higher wage, uh, causing a situation where most people who enter into Bate life find it very difficult to ever save money, to get ahead, or to even move beyond that Bate life. Sugarcane is harvested all by hand. Uh, that means the workers go out and they, they cut all the sugarcane with, with a machete. Um, and that's from, you know, anywhere from six in the morning to four or five in the afternoon, they're bent over cutting sugarcane. So a, a lot of the, the people here get worked until they can't anymore. Um, Pastor Mede talked about this morning, he said they, they have their, their life sucked out of them. As you get older, without a family, a lot of these people are, are walking around waiting to die, which is what uh, Giovanni, that's how, that's how she describes the condition. She says that these men are, are walking around waiting to die. The most vulnerable person in a community is the child, um, but really the context where they grow, the context where they're in, that's what they're going to reproduce, that's what they're going to be later on in life. So our, our child sponsorship program in Haiti and here in the DR is focused on the family. So, so when someone sponsors a child, um, not only are they providing uh, discipleship and, and like a spiritual mentor for the child, not only is it like a food pack for the family, documentation so that the child can, can go to high school or university or even get a job, um, it's really, it, it gives us the opportunity um, to be in touch with the family, to disciple the family, um, to really see the family become Christ-centered.